1851. To the end that justice be established, public order maintained, and liberty perpetuated, we the people of the state of Indiana, grateful to Almighty God for the free exercise of the right to choose our own form of government, do ordain this Constitution. The 1500s, Spanish explorer Fernando de Soto visits Angel Mounds near Evansville. The 1600s, French explorer de La Salle enters northwestern Indiana through the St. Joseph River. The 1700s, George Rogers Clark recaptures
the South Seas. He discovered, though, that he liked to write better than he liked to sail because he got seasick. His writing developed to the point where he became eventually the poet laureate of England for 37 years. When he was younger, he wrote a book of poetry called Sea Ballads, recounting his many experiences on the seas. And this is a, a, one of those poems set to music, probably the best known, Sea Fever. <coughs>
choice. Do you hear the children crying? I can hear them every day. Crying, sighing, dying, flying. Somewhere safe where they can play. Do you see the children meeting? I can see them in the sky. Meeting, seeding, eating, greeting Jesus with the answer, why? Why the milk no longer nourished? Why the water made them sick? Why the crops no longer flourished? Why the belly got so thick? Why they never knew the reason friends had vanished out of sight? Why some suffered for a season, others never saw the light? Do you see the children meeting? I can see them in the sky, meeting, seeing, eating, greeting Jesus with the answer, why? Do you hear the children singing? I can hear them high above, singing, springing, ringing, bringing glory to the God of love, glory for the gift of living, glory for the end of pain, glory for the gift of giving, glory for eternal gain. Glory from the ones forsaken, glory from the lost and lone, glory when the infants waken, orphans on the Father's throne. Do you hear the children singing? I can hear them high above, singing, springing, ringing, bringing glory to the God of love. Do you see the children coming? I can see them on the clouds, coming, strumming, drumming, humming, Songs with heaven's happy crowds. Songs with lots of happy clapping. Songs that set the heart on fire. Songs that make your foot start tapping. Songs that make a merry choir. Songs so loud the mountains tremble. Songs so pure the canyons ring. When the children all assemble, millions, millions round the king. Do you see the children coming? I can see them on the clouds. Coming, strumming, drumming, humming, songs with heaven's happy crowds. Do you see the children waiting? I can see them all aglow. Waiting, 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 waiting. Who of us will rise and go? Will we turn and fly to meet them? Will we venture something new? I intend to rise and greet them. Come and go with me, would you?
could paint a word picture so that you see it in your mind's eye, like Dr. Bob Jones Jr. could. And in his writing, his poetry is evidence of that. And few composers could set a poem like this to music to send it into your imagination so that you truly see. In your mind, come to Calvary and see crimson drops outflowing. <clears throat>
last selection in the program is based on the 98th Psalm. This joyful song provides the inspiration for many hymn settings, but one of the best known and loved is Isaac Watts' Joy to the World. Psalm 98 urges God's people, all of God's creation, to unite in praise for the wonders of grace and righteousness displayed in God's great salvation. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise, and rejoice, and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of a song. With trumpets and sound of cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world, and the people with equity. Mary Lightfoot's A Jubilant Song combines traditional Latin and modern English with an unabashedly joyful musical setting. Each Latin phrase is immediately followed in English. We invite you to rejoice with us as we sing unto the Lord. years. I think I learned more history today than I have in that entire 20 years. 
And uh, if that's the case with you too, if you have some deficiencies to make up, make sure you see some of the exhibits uh, on the table in the foyer. So my thanks to the young people for that. Thank you to Grace Stern for working with our young people, the handout choir. That was a tremendous blessing. Uh, that's a lot of energy for Grace to have to harness and direct. And uh, she did a great job. We thank God for her. Uh, my thanks as well to Sarah Elliott, who directs our choir. Uh, we're thankful for this ministry. And it is a ministry. And that's how Sarah approaches it. Uh, in the choir as well, and we thank the Lord for their ministry to us tonight and to things we anticipate from them in the days ahead. So my thanks to that. I had to ask Holly, is this the fourth or fifth uh, anniversary of our recital? She told me it was the fifth. This marks the fifth year. And Holly has been uh, organizing these each time. She really took the initiative uh, to put these things together. And uh, that's not an easy thing to do. She pours her heart and her effort into this, and we are grateful to her, and we want to make a special presentation to her. So Holly, if you would come, we're going to put you on the spot here for just a moment. If you would come to the stage here, we just have something we want to present to you as a token of our thanks and appreciation for the hard work that you've done. with each other. We're going to close in a word of prayer, and during that prayer, I will pray for the Lord to bless our fellowship uh, in our partaking of the food, so there'll be no need for me to do that again. Sometimes I forget that when everyone's gathered, and I have to do that before we start. I'm going to do that now. So let's seek the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight that our hearts have been stirred by what we have heard. We thank you that the gospel has been ministered to us. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that was given to many of our children. We ask, O oh Lord, for all our children tonight, that they would grow up to believe in thee and honor thee. May it be their chief desire to glorify God and enjoy him forever. We pray that thou will carry them forward in thy perfect will. And we ask now, dear Lord, that you'll bless our time together. In the time of fellowship to follow, bless the food to our bodies. We thank you for the hands that have prepared it. And grant, O oh Lord, that as we go our separate ways this evening, may our minds be stayed on Christ, knowing as we do that thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. O oh Lord, it may be that there are those in our midst tonight that are strangers to thy grace, strangers to the salvation that's been presented to us in song. If that be the case, we pray that thou wilt strive with such as these, convict them of their sin, convince them of thy love, and grant, Lord, that they will be drawn to thee to the saving of their souls. So hear our prayers and take our thanks now in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>